Wait a minute. Wait. Hold on. So I want to show you something. These are two images that I got from NASA.gov. I'm going to show you right now. See that emblem on the top? That's showing exactly where this picture is coming from. It's coming from NASA.gov. And I got this picture from NASA.gov. It's from 2022. And this is another one from NASA.gov. See the emblem? And it's from 2012. All I did was put the images side by side. Look at the images below. Do you know, notice something strange? Is it just me or is it not just me? Which one? And actually what I did here for you is I made the pictures of the earth about the same size so you can really see the comparison. Look at the size of the United States from 2012 compared to 2022. Just look at it. I'm going to give you a little time. I'm just going to let you look at it. Just go ahead. Did you notice the size yet? Just go ahead and take a look at the size of the United States in 2012 compared to 2022. What does that mean? That should show you that if these are official images from NASA.gov and you got one picture in 2012 showing this huge image of the United States compared to 2022 and this really small image of the United States. That should make you wonder and say, wait a minute. They shouldn't be any difference of size just over a matter of 10 years. It ain't like the United States shrunk over four times over the last 10 years, y'all. What does that mean then? That just simply means that they're lying to you. This is not real. This is CGI. This is all fake. And if it's CGI and it's fake and it's coming from a .gov website, that should make you wonder and say, wow, wait a minute. That means they're lying to me. And now you finally get it. Yes, they are lying to you. You don't live on a spinning ball floating through outer space. And this picture is not something that they're capturing from outer space either. They just have cameras that are up high. And in the picture in 2012, the reason it looks closer is because simply the, the camera is taking a closer picture than it's taking a picture in 2022. For instance, my face is closer because I'm taking a closer picture compared to being further away. That's all it is. They're lying to you and they got you thinking this is a spinning ball. No, all it did was take an image that they took of the earth. Threw some CGI on it with some fake clouds, fake water, fake land and put an outside edge of a circle around it. That's all they did. Here's one of the images that they said is from 2023. It's supposed to be showing an eclipse over the earth in 2023. And even this is a fake image. My goal in all of this is just to show you that you've been lied to. You've been duped. All of these different images that they're showing you of the earth are just fake images. That's all they are. A bunch of CGI and fake things. Every cloud, every landmass, everything they show you in here is just CGI. Next time that you see an image of the quote unquote earth, and you got two different pictures from two different years, and the landmass is almost four times bigger, you might want to just sit around and think about that for the first time. I still believe that we live on a globe because we do not live in a world, and I'll prove it right now from your own NASA government website and documents. All right, this is a real government document from NASA, from their website. And as you can see right here, you know, you see NASA's website right here. I'm not playing around. This comes from NASA. And I literally had to go look for this on their website, and I had to go to the document page and go all the way down so I could find this, and I did find it. And I found it perfectly to show you we live on a flat earth, not rotating, and it says it right So, as you can see, Right here is talking about, uh, it's too small for me to right now, but um, right here, as you can see, it's saying flying was really flat, and I don't know what it is, basically talking about aircraft and stuff like that on the document, saying how they fly over and I don't know what they How would they have flying over and I don't know what they have flying over and I don't Don't you think that's a little sus when they tell us about us being on a ball spinning? Come on. Oh boy, he thought I was done. No, 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 no. I'm not done. There's another document right here. Uh, the same thing, right? The same thing on NASA's government website saying 
Same thing in a vertical on a non-rotating flat earth. They're talking about aircraft fly over a non-rotating flat earth. Hey, what can this be? All right, so here's a dilemma, everybody. This right here is a Chicago skyline. Chicago being seen from over here, which is 57 miles away. The picture was taken about five feet off the ground. So with that being said, using the earth curve calculator, 57 miles should be 2,166 feet of curve that should be under under what we can see. So the Willis Tower is 1,451 feet tall, right? According to the Earth Curve Calculator, 2,100 feet. So technically, there should be another 600 feet on top of that building that we can't see. There should be that much that's hidden from our sight. Now, some people are saying that it's a superior mirage, okay? This right here is a superior mirage. You see how the boat looks like it's up in the air, you know? It's this right here, and, you know, this explains it. And I get that and all, but I'm just saying, if these buildings right here are 1,500 feet tall, but from where we're at, at five feet off the ground, looking at almost 60 miles away, 2,000 feet should be hidden on the other side of the curve. How are we seeing that building? How? You still don't know that you don't live in a solar system and that Saturn isn't a planet 790 million miles away? You see, when you look up real footage from real telescopes and real Nikon cameras and you see what Saturn looks like, it looks fake to me. And I have thought this for 22 years before I was even awake to the lies of the world. When I was in my college observatory and saw this, I challenge you, as soon as you're done watching this video, go look this up yourself. Go find Saturn on YouTube through a Nikon camera or a telescope and look just how ridiculously fake this looks. This is not a planet 790 million miles away. And then I want you to go to Google and type in Saturn in Saturn images. And I want you to scroll through and see how they all look different and they all look computer generated. Now, I don't claim to know exactly what Saturn is, but I can tell you what it's not. And it's not a planet 790 million miles away, 10 times the size of Earth. When you look critically at these pictures, all these different NASA images, they all look different. They all look different colors. They all look different sizes. They all look different shapes. Nothing is consistent. And these rings that are supposedly ice rings, they never have images of these chunks of ice. You see, you do not live in a solar system. You live in a realm where everything in the night sky is here for you. It's for signs and seasons, and Saturn is part of that. I don't claim to know exactly what Saturn is, but I do claim to know exactly what Saturn isn't. And it is not some sort of object like a planet that you can send a rover to. And it is much, much closer than they tell us. And all you have to do is look at the images they give us, the images that NASA gives us that all look different all the time. And you don't need to know exactly what Saturn is. You just need to know exactly what it's not. And it's not what they're telling you. Now, I have some theories and opinions about what Saturn is and why the Luciferian elites like Jim Carrey wearing his Saturn shirt and these guys with their 666 symbols all worship Saturn. But that's a video for another time. This one, all you have to do is know that Saturn is not what you've been told. And if you can figure that out, you are one step closer to realizing that you are not an accident created from a big bang evolved from monkeys and that you are here created from a creator with a purpose and when you figure that out, the world is your oyster. Ain't nobody been to the moon. Ain't nobody been outside this giant cage we're trapped in. The firmament is real. This is why rocket ships take off and they start shooting at an angle. They'll scrape the firmament and they always land in the ocean. No, there's no satellites. They are hanging satellites in the firmament. This is our GPS system. Nothing will get through the firmament. So is it like a shape of a snow globe? No, um, then they shoot some grainy film that they were on the moon. It scraped the surface of the firmament, landed. It's only one day, but the landing is like, uh, a week later, but that's when it showed. <laughs>
it takes a very confident, almost high testosterone alpha type person to stand alone and say, I believe this, whether you all believe it or not. Does anyone else remember the Georgia Guidestones? If you don't know what the Georgia Guidestones were, essentially they were just tall stone tablets. And on them, they had the same exact text, but just written in different languages. And there's some pretty weird stuff written on these tablets. Check this out. Maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. Now, if you do the math, that's like a 90% reduction in the world's current population today. But besides the weird messages like keeping humanity under 500 million, it had some astronomical features. Number one, channel through the stone indicates celestial pole, which is our North Star, Polaris. Number two, horizontal slot indicates annual travel of the sun. Number three, sunbeam through the capstone marks noontime throughout the year. Now, one of the channels that they were talking about drilled through the stone was this one right here. And it didn't matter what time of year it was, you could walk up to this hole and see it aiming at Polaris, the celestial pole. Can one of you guys explain how we are supposed to believe this worked when this is a clean movements of our solar system? Like the entire solar system is moving at 500,000 miles an hour, 4.9 billion miles in a single year through space. We are tilted on an axis, wobbling, processing, while we are supposed to be orbiting the sun at 67,000 miles an hour while this hole sat on Polaris day and night. So people often ask, is everybody lying about the shape of the earth? And the reality of the situation is actually a lot less complicated and a lot more simple genius than people might think. Everything's just heavily compartmentalized. So you know like how there's science, but then there's a whole lot of different fields of science. So like how a rocket scientist might be needed to do one task on something, but they may need like an astrophysicist or something to tell them about another thing or something like that in order to get a complete analyzation of the situation or whatever they're studying. So what's actually going on here is nobody's actually fully studying anything. They study what they learn in a field of interest. A field of interest is a, a field given to you to keep you narrowed or boxed into that field so you don't go into the next field because you don't have the certifications or the clarity or the, you feel me, the clearance. You don't have a need to know of what's going on in said field because you are not in that field of interest. That's not the field you're in. So then what do naive and poorly misguided people do? Well, they thoroughly believe that after they studied something to a certain degree and gave it to somebody else that they should be able to trust that person. And see, at the end of this little line, there's this little, they got little selected people that they chose for peer reviewing because this somehow makes it official to trust a stranger to tell you something has been peer reviewed. Because these people are all pros and believe that they're all pros in the way that they've been educated, the process of giving or receiving systematic instruction, they feel like, hey, I've done I've done my job. And so since this is the next person's job and my education fell through to through the degree that I, I've learned it to the degree that I've learned it, then I should be able to trust the next person since they've been educated to be able to. So these are all people who have been systematically instructed to do things a certain way and believe that they have completed the task after after doing it to a certain degree. No one knows the full story and no one has ever conducted a full analyzation of anything for themselves. Making that not science at all is pseudo. This comes from people being given a baseless foundation of the, their world in the first place. So you're pretty much born with bias. Since, since the time anybody else is teaching you anything, you're pretty much becoming biased to everything else. So if your mom and your pops, they believe that the earth is a, is a sphere and they're telling you that, hey, it's a sphere because of this, because of that, things that they've been educated on, you're almost guaranteed to believe it. I personally don't like to call education systematic instruction. I like to call it systematic grooming, systematic child grooming. What y'all are failing to realize here is we're not dealing with uh, liars and everything like in the, in the public. We're not dealing with uh, liars like so the scientists or whatever. No, they uh, they all believe that they're doing the right thing. They all believe that they're correct in what they're doing. The one thing that they all have in common is they were all subjected to systematic instructions. So after they put all their hard work and life effort, even if they were to find something down the line that seems wrong or seems off, they're not going to say anything. First of all, they don't want they don't want to um, discredit or make other people look like they they're some type of slow because that might backlash on them. 
let's just say that they were to point out something like the uh like discrepancies in the heliocentric model or something we know how that works people are gonna just ridicule you to hell and different stuff like that so people would rather not touch on these situations and just continue getting their money because this is where they this is where they're getting paid to be able to feed their families and different stuff so they don't want to put out anything that might get their name tarnished or have them lose their jobs and the ability to feed their kids so they leave it to somebody else to point out that discrepancy. Then after that, they consider their analy analyzation complete and they hand it off to the next person that needs to continue the study because they're in a different field. Complete and utter f***ing brainwash. What's up everybody, it's the bird turn. Today we're going to go over the Gleason's new standard map of the world and then I'm going to show you how compass navigation works on this map. Just so you know, compass navigation would not will not work on a ball whatsoever. Gleason's new standard map of the world on the projection of modern college. J.S. Christopher, Blackheath, England, scientifically and practically correct as it is. Patent allowed November 15th, 1892. Applications made in England, Canada, France, Denmark, Sweden, Germany, and Australia. So this is a longitude and time calculator. We live in a big clock made by God, y'all. And before I have some trolls come on here and be like, Oh, this is projection of the globe on a flat map. Then explain to me why this says the sun moves. We're going to go over the June solstice real quick. In the figures, June and December, the white represents the sun's position in its respective months at noon. This shows sunlight inside the Arctic Circle for 24 hours. From June 21st, the sun moves round the tropics in a spiral circle, widening every day until it reaches its destiny on the southern or outer solstice on December 21st. So what this is saying, that is in the summer solstice, the sun moves around the tropic of Cancer, widening every day, okay, until it reaches the Tropic of Capricorn, okay? And that brings me here to the December solstice. On December 21st, the sun moves around the Tropic of Capricorn, and during the day lights up the southern portion of the Earth from the Arctic Circle to some portion of the Antarctic ice. There is no sunlight beyond 80th degree south, but unknown regions of ice. On the 23rd of December, the sun commences its northward journey again, returning to its starting place, and thus completes the seasons. So, in the December solstice, the sun goes around the Tropic of Capricorn and slowly goes inwards, okay, back to the Tropic of Cancer, alright? So, the sun in our summer solstice goes around this, widening every day okay until bam that's why when it is our summer okay it is australia's winter okay because during our winter the sun is moving out here okay in our summer the sun is moving here all right so to show you guys that this compass works see it all right now now east is this way west is this way okay so when using a compass you want to keep the the needle pointed on north locked in on north okay all right now you want to follow east while keeping the needle pop on north right so when you do this you'll see it lines up perfectly with the grid lines of the map you see what I mean this is east, this is west, alright? Now you know how they say, oh, Antarctica's in the south, dude, it's an ice wall, okay? Any way you look, this is south, okay? So, bam, you go south, there's an ice wall, okay? South, ice wall, okay? Even from the other side of the map, okay? South, the ice wall, okay? South, the ice wall. See, we'll even do this from here, man. You just keep it pointed on the north, all right? Say you want to go east. Whoosh, whoosh. 
See that? Now, circumnavigation has only happened east to west or west to east. You cannot circumnavigate north to south because you'll hit a wall because we don't live on a ball. Okay? And they can say that circumnavigation has happened north to south, but they're liars. So when the sun is traveling on the map, okay, wherever it is above your head, that is noon. Okay, if the sun's over here, it's noon for Australia. The sun's over here, it's noon for them. Okay, so that's how it works. And I hope this helps people in their journey to the real world. All right, guys, have a good one. The Flat Earth map dates back over 1,000 years. This map is credited to being created by a Persian astronomer. His name was al Biruni, and he lived between 973 AD to 1048 AD. It's the official map of the United Nations and also the United States Geological Survey. It used to be present in many places before the creation of NASA and the Antarctic Treaty in 1959. Here you see it with Admiral Byrd. This map has been restored by Dmitri from Russia with suggestions of mine, Idia Lenkar. Known by my YouTube channel Flat Earth Benjo, I asked Dmitri to include the Bermuda Triangle and Point Nemo, a place deep in the Pacific where NASA buries rockets. Then Robert Tazi, a professional mapmaker, came along and enhanced the map even more. There are many people now selling this map online, but if you could order it from my online store, I would greatly appreciate it. Visit my online store now and order one of the items. I humbly thank you.